Hey, Primer Tech employees, welcome back to the Primer Tech Files, the South Get Media Group podcast dedicated to all things heroes and heroes reborn related news. I am Lilith, and on the hunt for specials slash evos, with me, as always, is one of them. It's me, Ricky. I've got nothing else to say. Okay, well, I guess my <laughs> tip is that close to you is a creepy, messed up episode. <laughs> the only saving grace is the opening narration is done by HRG. <laughs> So with that said, let's just jump right into the recap. The original air date for this episode is January 11th, 2010. It was written by Rob Fresco and directed by Roxanne Dawson. And we have Hero and Ando travel to Florida to rescue Mahinda from a mental institution. Noah seeks out Matt to help him with a lead on dealing with Samuel. Peter learns of a horrifying potential future event involving Emma. Wow. Yes. And the only thing really that we need to know is Vanessa Wilder, Robert Nepper's character's childhood sweetheart who happened to work at the house that he sunk into oblivion. Yes. She's just a plain old crappy human. There is one thing I want to bring up. The mental institution is blatantly just a reused Primatech from season two, right? Because if you look (sighs) down on that ground, it's got those, those green tilings. And the thing is, if you look at those green tilings... And you look at the green tilings in the AA meeting in Heroes Reborn, it's exactly the same place, right? Or is it just me? It could be. I don't know. Maybe you've been uh, paying too much attention. <laughs> I have blatantly been paying too much attention. But anyway, yes. So, where should we start off with? Oh, okay. So, the opening narration, it's <laughs> like HRG just talking about Claire and how he's burnt his bridge with her and how he wants to rebuild it. And all that stuff. And so then we also see him go to, um, you know, he's talking about that with Lauren as they go over, like, newspaper clippings. And they're trying to find a way to find Samuel. And then they finally come up with Vanessa Wheeler. And they go, hey, didn't she used to, her family used to own that estate that fell into the sinkhole. And they're like, aha! Got him! (laughs) (laughs) And so off they kind of go. Yes. Uh, Noah is also kind of ashamed of himself at the moment for, you know, his part in the whole Cy Nathan thing. And he's not at all going to contact Claire at this point. Like he's he's like, oh, well, she's not going to talk to me. So I'm not not that I'm not going to talk to her. But, you know, he's just not going to contact her at this point. Um, also, he's kind of chasing Samuel to the point of obsession at this point. But also at the same time, you know, Sila's out there and it's his new white whale. I suppose. I suppose. Maybe he knew that Sila would be impotent. I don't know. Anyway, let's move on to... Shall we just go straight on to, like, HRG, Matt, and Janice? Because that's a thing, right? So this is Janice with a short hair don't care, right? It is. I know, right? And it's like every time a character cuts their hair, they get better. Claire got better. (laughs) Janice got better. Eden got better. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) So... We start off with Parkman essentially just hiding from the world, and he's just like looking after baby Matt and using it as an excuse. He's a house husband. Yeah. He's a real house husband of Hollywood. I know, right? What's up, Kev Hart? <laughs> and <laughs> it's it's actually quite nice to see Janice like supporting his decision. Like she's like, you know, I've got, you know, you can work for like my boss or something like that. And he's like, no, nah, no, nah, I'm happy. Yeah, yeah. He's like, oh no, nah, I'm happy like looking after the family. She's like, okay, well, you know. It's, you know, whatever you want to do. And she, like, builds his confidence, and it's really nice to see. You know, she she's not that naggy kind of wife um, that Absolutely once was. <laughs> Scandalous, I know. And, you know, he kind of acknowledges that, you know, he should have done something about Sila once he got, it out, got him out of his head. And, you know, he's got the kind of guilt and fear clearly playing because, obviously, Sila could come at any time for him. Or something like that, right? So, yeah. But also, how is Matt free? <laughs> how is he, like, at home? Angela. I just chalk it up to Angela. Fair enough. Or, he, I mean, he does have his powers. He could have just made that all go away. Yeah, fair enough, yeah. Okay. What should we talk about next? Because I'm going to bore Okay, so HRG <laughs> just shows up at Matt's place, though. He's like, ah, you should really get a better security system. <laughs> <laughs> what a jerk. And, and he's like tries he... to corral him into helping him with this whole Samuel thing. Yeah, and he does. Because, you know, it's Parkman. He's He does that kind of stuff, I guess. So, yeah. Yeah. It was weird. I would have just told him to get the hell out. And I would have put a thought in his head to get the hell out, personally. But Matt's a good person, and that's why I love him. <laughs> <laughs> 
So yeah, yeah and then they, they end go. up they end, off they go get Vanessa and uh, they try and set a trap for Samuel. But Samuel's you know he's he's one uh, he's smarter than your average bear. He's a wily one. Exactly. So yeah, he ends up taking Vanessa and leaving them in his dust. So yes. Literally. <laughs> so we also get uh, is that mom? yeah. So you, Peter's got the his mom's powers now, and well, okay. So we gotta back up. Emma was yes. setting a thirst trap. She's playing the cello, thinking of Peter. All of a sudden, he's walking. And he's like, "Hey, I'm gonna go visit Emma." And so <laughs> then she like, starts explaining. And he's like, I "Gave you that cello?" And she's like, "Samuel." And they go through this, and then he like drags her to the apartment and goes, "Is this the man that gave you the cello?" And he's a bad <laughs> man. And Emma's like. It's over, but before she could really get it out, Angela comes because she's hungry, as she always is, <laughs> um, looking for Peter. And then she's like, she sees Emma, and then, you know, gives, stay away from that girl. And Emma's like, excuse you, witch? And, like, storms <laughs> out. And then, like, after she leaves, Angela's like, oh, I got a premonition. You can't save her. Stay away from her, Peter. No one can save her. No, you can't save her. And then Peter's like, oh, but she can be saved. And snatches Angela's power. And I'm like, you don't know, bird. <laughs> and Angela just gives him the look of like you how dare you and then just like storms off but yeah he ends up using his power the new power to have sweaty dreams and um yeah it's it's weird because you know the whole season we haven't had that kind of future kind of scene thing to kind of drive the story yep. and I didn't even like think about it until this episode but like this is obviously that whole kind of Storyline. Sort of tried to. Yeah, it's like Isaac's paintings, but without Isaac's paintings. But it's, it's a like, nice way. But realize this is episode four fourteen out of four eighteen, and we're yeah. just getting this. The whole point of the season is coming in at four fourteen. <laughs> yeah, wow. that's crazy. It's different. It's different. I like. It's oh, you know, it's... and you know. It. <laughs> Fair enough. So we'll move on to the other trying part of the episode which is Ando, Hero and Mahinda Ugh. so no, yes they go to rescue my baby my sweaty doped up baby <laughs> finally Mohinder's back in the back in motion back in play so they end up going to Primatech oh sorry I mean um, the asylum Riverdale I think it's called <laughs> and um, puts Hero. Hero in and for some reason now Red Lightning can open doors for some reason, instead of frying circ- yeah, instead of frying circ- circuitry, but you know enough about that. It's kind of like a, a hero kind of comedy aspect of the episode, which kind of harks back to season one. But at the same time, I like the fact that you know they take away the drugs from Mohinder, but Ando ends up taking the drugs because it doesn't make the job any easier. Because it would have been pr- probably a bit more simple if Ando was able to use his powers. Because, you know, you've already got the Achilles heel of Hero not being able to use his powers or be coherent. So, yeah. yeah. I kind of like that aspect. And then the ho- is this the one with the electroshock therapy, which kind of comes yeah. out of nowhere as well? Which is a bit... Um... It was like, he had the answer the whole time? Really? Okay. Yeah. But, yeah. I think that's that's another one of those kind of, oh, we've got four episodes left. Let's let's fix this up quickly. What can we do? Oh, electroshock therapy with red lightning. He'll be healed in uh, two seconds, and then he'll be able to teleport oh out. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then, exactly. Okay, but the best part, the absolute best part of this episode that comes from the three of them being together is that they teleport to HRG's place. Like they cockblock the hell out of him. I know. He's like get, he's getting into that full blown tongue in the mouth with Lloyd. <laughs> then they go, oh, so sorry. And he's like, hello, boys. And I'm like, you're not Crowley from Supernatural. Stop it, HRG. <laughs> oh, that was a great way to end the episode. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> ends with the old little wave. All of them waving. So, yeah. Awkward. <laughs> that's basically it. Yeah, that's really... Other than, you know, HRG trying to make up with Claire and Claire blowing them off. That was just, like, my thing. I'm like, yes, yeah, so don't make it easy for him. So, let's get back into the re- review. Who is your favorite character? Uh, I'm going to go with Ando. He stood up for Hero to Mohinder. 
took Mohinder's medication. He got to play the loopy, doped up guy. Um, I, I don't know. It's been a minute since I know got to do anything. I, I think uh, Kaisen James Lee did a really good job in this episode. With what I don't know. Is this, is this the one where he also works out what Hero's trying to say? This yeah. is where... Yeah, yeah. See, I, I like that kind of bit that, you know, him and Hero are still really good friends, but now he's kind of content being the sidekick. I didn't like that bit. Um, because, you know, the last time they were kind of together, they were equals. And here he's, like, kind of just content. And I didn't like that bit because, you know, at this point, you know, they they are equals because they both have powers. He's also dying. If he gets ready to marry his Yeah. I mean, I get it. I didn't really get the feeling that he was, like, content with being a sidekick. It's just that, you know, that was kind of the default role. And he was just trying to help his friend. And they're the best bro TP on this show. Let's just do it. Yeah. Um, I am going to go with... I'm going to go with HRG because, you know, why not? <laughs> no reasons. It's just, it's just HRG. Um, no, I will probably go with... Yeah, I'll go with HRG because, you know, he's getting him some. What, what? <laughs> <laughs> I know. What about favorite scene? Favorite scene has got to be the end. I'm looking at it now. I'm just looking at the, the three of them waving. Mohinda, yeah. Ando, and Hero. I'm just looking at them waving, and it just make it's making me smile. Like they're all dirty and stuff, and it's just like, sorry, cock blocks, but still, can you help us? <laughs> How about you? I have to say, I think my favorite thing is shoot, it's where they go to see Vanessa, and Vanessa's like not buying what HRG is selling, and then HRG looks at Matt like, can you help me out with your thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> And then Matt's like, oh, right, right, the reason why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'm also, for my favourite scene, I'm, well, not really my favourite scene, but I really liked the aspect of seeing Angela's dreams or Angela's powers. And I can see how, like, the dreams can be misinterpreted because, you know, the way Sila comes in at one point and just says, I'm here to save you in, like, a totally deadpan voice. And you can kind of see how, you know, you can, the dreams are open to interpretation at that point. So, yeah. My favorite character interaction is actually Lydia and her daughter. Her daughter is giving her so much damn sass. I was <laughs> knock the crap out of that little girl. You don't even know. <laughs> I'm going to go with uh, Lauren and HRG because, you know, it's, it's a very tense. It's very tense between them. And you know they're both thinking it. And, uh, I yeah. Love I... sexual tension. Exactly. That's you know. classic. <laughs> So, we are going to go on to lines. What is your favorite line? Mm, Fave lines, fave lines. Oh, okay. Mohinder goes, uh, you can use your red lightning. And uh, I was like, oh, see, like, this one time, you know, once saw a future where I killed him with my red lightning. And then Mohinder was like, was it in Florida? I was like, no, Japan. Mohinder, then we're good to go. <laughs> so funny. I'm going to go with, you can put me in here, in here, to be continued. Because that is <laughs> just every... Every episode of Heroes. So, yeah. I also like um, the line where uh, Lydia's daughter tells her, hey, why don't you just call him, which is a reference to the webisodes as well. But then yeah. Lydia's like, maybe I can. And then she sends Peter the compass. Mm. I thought that was really cool. But, like, uh, lackadaisical and not uh, uh, illogical. But whatever. <laughs> mm. Fair enough. So, grades. C plus. Yeah, I agree. Because we got the ball rolling. Yeah, I agree. So everybody's just phoning it in at this point, acting-wise, to me. Mm, I don't know. I think I think Peter's doing a good job, but he's not even, even in this episode, really, is he? So. He has, like, those... He tries to yeah. call HRG when he gets the compass. Yeah, fair enough. Let's just move on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So... Trivia. I have bits of trivia, which is basically this is the last narration, I believe. Yeah, this is the last time we have narration on the show because obviously the show is cancelled at this point, and Noah's the fifth person to do narration for the show. Uh, and then obviously Hero has loads of pop culture references once again: Don Quixote, Star Wars, Hulk, Sherlock Holmes, Batman, Harry Potter, and yeah, that's it. So. We will move on to the graphic novels, which are called The Trip Part 1 and The Trip Part 2. So the first one's called, like, subtitled Splinter. And this is basically after Hero's been whammied by Carney Damien. You're seeing everything through his eyes, 
And it's weird because they'll they'll basically show two panels at the same time where one is where what he sees and the other is like the real world. And it's basically the story of him saving a lost dog and he sees Mahinda and then he goes to try and save him and that's the kind of end of that. And there's so many like Easter eggs in every panel of the thing from every kind of popular cultural references. I would just get you to go to Heroes Wiki to see them because there's too many for me to list. So we'll move on to part two, which is called Elementary My Dear Hero. And it's basically an episode of Hero getting chased around by a guard. And it's very slapsticky. And once again, it's done with like the whole two pages. One is seeing it from his point of view and one of it's seen from the real, real world point of view and it ends with him ending up back in Japan. So yes... Um, the first issue was written by Faz McDermott and the art was by Jason Badauer. The Easter egg was a behind-the-scenes image of Doug Haley and uh, Julian De La Salle. And then the second issue was written by uh, Jim Martin and the artwork was done once again by Jason Badauer. The Easter egg was a behind-the-scenes image of Jack Coleman, Hayden Payne, T. Air, and Milo Ventimiglia doing God knows what. God knows what. <laughs> So next up, we have the following people joined us during the live tweets, or either tweeting, retweeting, or faving. We have Nice One Franzi, Sinzia Six Six Seven, what what? Kathy Titer, English Idiot One Hundred One, Heroes Reborn Underscore, Mike Schmidt Zero Nine, Kinda Kia, Demetria Mills Three, Proof of Life Seven Zero, and Paraseline. Oh, thank you very much. And we also have a bit of feedback from our favourite English Idiot 101, Charlie. She says, Hey, it's Charlie. I quite enjoyed the three episodes, even if they moved a little slow in terms of story. I'm glad they finally gave Nathan a funeral and that Peter and Claire know what happened. Samuel was just straight up evil, but I don't like how they introduce his love. It draws the evilness away from him. I don't like what they've done to Sila either. He is far too removed from his season one origins. Hero was just confusing, but he's supposed to be, I guess. And it's nice to see Mahinda again. Heroes has a lot of story to do in only a few episodes, and they're not quite there yet with these three. I totally agree. They're kind of rushing at this point to kind of get it done. It's like they kind of expected to have about 20 odd episodes and weren't told to, NBC was late. like lol no <laughs> yeah yeah looks like it's time for some shameless plugs and self-promotion we'll start with the show contact info we here at prima tech files love listener feedback if you would like to get a hold of us we have a ton of ways you can email us via prima tech files at gmail.com you can leave us a private message or interact with our posts over on facebook.com forward slash prima tech files we live tweet Two episodes per week every Saturday starting at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. For more information, be sure to follow us on Twitter at Primatech Files. You can also find us on Clamor, Tumblr, and YouTube by simply searching for Primatech Files. If you enjoy this podcast, be sure to rate, review, and subscribe to us on iTunes. What's that? You don't have an iTunes account? That's okay. We're on a lot of podcaster services such as Stitcher and SoundCloud. All you have to do is search for, you guessed it, Primatech Files. We're also on Lib- Libsyn. And if you want to follow our RSS feed there, all you have to do is go to primatechfiles.libsyn.com and bookmark the site to stay up to date with this podcast. Libsyn is spelled L-I-B-S-Y-N, just in case you were wondering. We look forward to interacting with you. If you love our podcast, be sure to check out Southgate Media Group's iTunes provider page to see a list of what other podcasts are hot and trending in our network. Or you can take that one step further and visit southgatemediagroup.com where you can find a full list of our 80 plus podcasts along with weekly blogs and information about all the hosts. With so many podcasts that cover everything from anime to wrestling, there's sure to be tons of podcasts that can interest you. Hey guys, you should know by now that you can find me on Twitter at Lilith Hellfire. If you have a Tumblr, be sure to check out it's lilithhellfire.tumblr.com. And of course, be sure to swing by my blog if you are a pop culture junkie or comic book geek at littlepopculturevulture.blogspot.com. I also host several other podcasts on the Southgate Media Group Network. Some of them are The Flashpoint, Queen Consolidated, and Channel 52. So if you are into, obviously, DC comic book related stuff, be sure to check it out. You can find my writings at tvbinges.com. It's a place for all your binge watching needs, and you can also create your own TV binge and we'll help promote it. We do a monthly binge watch, which you're more than welcome to join in. Just go to their Twitter at tvbinges.com. 
just to find out more information. You can find me on Twitter at Ricky J D S. That's R I C K Y J D I A Z or Z if you're American. And we are gonna wrap it up. We want to thank you for joining us on this edition of Prime Tech Files. We hope you enjoyed it and found it informative and entertaining. Please do be sure to keep sending in those emails. Follow us on Twitter, Tumblr, Clamor, YouTube, and don't be afraid to interact with our Facebook posts. Like, share, and comment. Keep it up. You guys are doing such a great job. Heroes Reborn is so close we can taste it. And well, even when that's over, we still have tons of stuff heroes related to talk about. So. Give us your thoughts about what you want to see. Download the podcast, save the world.